That will honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well and live in the word and doctrine. Shallow one meaning peace, may that be unto the elect. Now, I was just trying to get some, well, very recently, trying to get some horse radish before Ha Pesach, before the Passover. And this is the state of the grocery section that in my local supermarket. <laughs> As you can see, look, all right, couple of melons, couple of watermelons. And then look at all that shit. Empty cucumbers. You know, and this is everywhere. This is everywhere. You know, in the UK, all the major supermarkets have rations. You know, we're in these times, man. That's what that's how we'll phrase it. Look, the next bit. Your oranges. Can't quite see what they were off this picture. Yeah, you know, but this is everywhere. This isn't just an odd aisle or two. You know, you can see there's there's more empty baskets than there are full. Okay. Again. <laughs> now look at the times we're in, man. We're looking to eat in this time. You know, we're going into a time that there will be famine. <laughs> look at this shit, man. This is not a normal... We're not living in normal times, you know. I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay, so look at this. All right, so let's get into some scriptures. Uh, Lord, it won't take too long, but look at this shit, man. It's, these are the times we're in. So I hear Ezra's. So second Ezra chapter 16. And verse 17, it says, Woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver those in who would deliver me in those days? Excuse me. Woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days? The answer is if we're getting deliverance, right? First you'd have to be of the elect. If you're of the elect, the one delivering you will be Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahweh Shai. You know, and just how we came out of ancient Egypt. You know, not all Israel is coming up. That's the thing. Well, not all Israel is Israel. The Israel of God, the Israel of the Most High, you know, that's the elect will be redeemed. If the elect are redeemed, or should I say, if you're of the elect and you are redeemed, because the elect will be redeemed, it'll be of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai. Right, just as the ancient Pasach, the ancient Passover had that, is, I don't want to say duality, but it had the two working in tandem. Right, the Heavenly Father and His Son subject unto Him, doing as He commanded. Right, as that death angel to smite the firstborn man and beast of the Egyptians. Right, these are the Times we're going into, and we're here. All right, verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? Now, let's say it all goes back to normal, so-called. Right, but we're still at, we're still in that season. You know, maybe it gets back to quote-unquote normal and everything goes down. You know, the prices drop, inflation's locked off. And then what does it speak about in the scriptures? You know, victuals should be so good cheap upon earth. Verse 21 there. Behold, victuals should be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow up on earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So it might seem, all right, the violence is getting less. Right, the food's coming back. Right, every there seems to be clarity in the earth. You know, at that point, also it's written in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse, let's start at 1. It says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Right? So they were aware. They were aware of the times. And this, it was the end time from Yahweh Shai's being on the scene. You know, it talks about having these last days in the book of Hebrews, you know, referring to from the time Yahweh Shai was on the earth. You know, more so when the, from Yahweh Shai was uh, resurrected and therefore ascended. So that was the last days. You know, Apostle Paul spoke about how our salvation is nearer than when we believed. In Romans, the 13th chapter. Well, that was damn near 2,000 years ago. How much more so now? So really in the time, especially in the Pesach season. You know, I, I didn't even manage to get my hands on any horseradish. And we're in <laughs> we're in a time of, again, while Jake want to mirth it up, party it up, pretend like nothing's happening. We're seriously in a time of, what does it say? F sword, famine, and great confusion, man. Okay, verse 2. 
For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh, cometh as a thief in the night. Right? And to, to someone that's at the door, you know, baseball bat in hand, waiting for a thief, yeah, it's not, you know, it's nothing severe. For them that have their eyes closed to it, you know, that have no clue, that's how it comes like a thief. Verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You know, how you get labor pains, how your waters break, you don't really expect it. You know, next minute all hell's breaking loose in your body. You know, that's what, how it's going to happen. You know, not everyone's looking for this. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse, I read verse 18 in fullness. It says, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? It says, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. All right, so because they're too stuck in their ways, you know, a lot of people, they're not going to repent. You know, it talks about when the, the fire from the nukes is upon them, that they still won't uh, repent of their wickedness, of their evil deeds. You know, so what can you do? Especially Jacob. All right, Jake, the majority of Jake is absolutely through. You can see where the Lord said he's going to murk off two thirds of them, right, in Babylon the Great. So we've read verse 21, we'll skip down to verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon the earth, upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. You know, so they might have escaped hunger, they might have escaped a famine, they might have finally found some food after you know, going without for however long. The next minute, you know, you've got some other guy out of jealousy, wickedness, or just because the Lord put on his spirit. You know, it talks about iniquity shall abound because the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, and then the sword meaning a weapon and a cutting instrument or implement, will destroy him, man. Now, these are the times we're going into. So the little, you know, two, two cucumbers gone at the supermarkets, nothing compared to the time we're going into. But Lord willing, it's a sign. You know, Lord willing, it doesn't get, get you know, back to so-called normal without this great, you know, crash that we've been prophesying, you know. So I'll leave it there. I'll call it a quick hit, as I said at the start. On to the next one, Lord willing. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakudash. You know, be vigilant at the time and you know, behave accordingly. What manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation of God in us? Shalom.